Hello everyone, welcome back to Happy Little Diodes, where today we'll be recapping and upgrading this Interface 1 with a VLA1. We'll also be installing a V-Drive into a microdrive to go with it. Both the VLA1 and the V-Drive are from Charles Ingley at V-Retro. There's a link in the description, go check his website out for more stuff like this. The VLA1 is a functional replica of the ULA which the Interface 1 came with. The ULA in the Interface 1 famously likes to fail spectacularly, overheating and melting the case. So it's not an upgrade as such, but it does mean that your Interface 1 isn't going to suddenly melt one day. Here's our naked Interface 1 board. We're going to be replacing these two capacitors here, and this one which is tucked away under the edge connector. This transistor patch is standard on Interface 1s, and with the VLA one we don't need it, so I'm just going to remove that. We do need to desolder the original ULA. I'm going to do it carefully because as far as I'm aware this one is actually working, so we want to keep it. Here's a tip. After you've removed a chip like this, or any chip for that matter, especially if the board doesn't belong to you as is the case here, just check the continuity of every joint to the traces you can see coming away from that joint. I've had cases before where I've broken a trace almost microscopically and it's been an absolute pain to try and find where the problem was. So I do this every time now after removing a chip and I think in the long run it will save more effort than it takes. Now while the chip's out I'm going to remove this capacitor so I can pop in a new one without the chip being in the way and check out this packaging. I guess it's 50-50 if you get this white packaging or the blue packaging based on the data sheet for these caps and I think they look kinda cool. I know people often want them to look blue uh, like the originals but this is gonna work. Even with the chip out of the way uh, that was tricky to put in. Luckily these two are a bit easier so let's get those in, solder them in and then we can put our new chip in. This is one of those boards where it would be useful to have some kind of clamp or some kind of gator clips to hold it in place because the edge connector on it really makes it sit awkward on the desk. I propped it up on this box for the most part while I was soldering, it seemed to do the trick. I tend to solder chips in a crisscross pattern just to avoid overheating any particular part of the chip. And don't forget to suddenly stop what you're doing in a panic and check that you've actually put the chip in the right way around. Luckily I had, that was 50-50. And here is our upgraded board, the VLA1 looking very modern and these nifty white capacitors. Moving on to the microdrive upgrade, the V-drive fits perfectly inside the old microdrive cases. It takes an SD card and it emulates up to 8 chained microdrives. So it seems like a really nice solution for storing your programs and also if you wanted to load some old microdrives and you had the images of them you can just pop them on the SD card and load them up this way. There's also no motors involved because it doesn't have to read the tape so you have to think that it's going to last a lot longer. It's a really nice construction. It's a couple of PCBs, lots of 3D printed parts and the SD card slot pops into a connector on the top as you'll see. Here are the guts of the original microdrive. Again I think these are working so I'm going to keep hold of them. And just by way of comparison here they are side by side. I will add that obviously the V drive is a lot lighter because it doesn't have a motor. The V drive comes with all of the fixings that you'll need. Although, if you are replacing the innards of an old microdrive, you can reuse the screws from that. You will need this spacer to make sure the board sits flush on the case. With two screws holding the board in place, we can pop on the SD card reader. This is designed to sit centrally in the opening in the case where you would normally put the microdrive in. This RGB LED pops in the hole where the original LED was. And with that in place and the wires neatly tucked away, we can start to put the whole thing back together again. 
and there it is, lovely. If you're thinking this micro drive case looks a bit knackered, well there's a good reason for that. Remember the FPGA video, where we made a knackered old Specky have an upgraded HD video output? Well, this goes with it. So let's hook it all up, and check that it's all working correctly. The green LED is a good sign, and if we type run, we can initialize the toolkit on the V drive. That seems to be working, so typing dot help should give us the list of commands that the V drive can do. Awesome, looking good. Thank you for watching, stay tuned for more videos coming soon, and a 300 subscriber celebratory giveaway.